Andy here, and today I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to celebrate hitting 4K subscribers, which I know is a very small milestone, but I'm just so thankful for anybody who's watched my video, liked it, left a comment. I just really appreciate all of you guys. And I got some good questions. So a lot of them are book related, but some of them are not. Some of these are from the tube and others are from the gram. So let's just get into it. This one I think is a good one to start with. What's been your favorite thing about joining YouTube? This is a great question. Growing up, I never really had people who had the same interests that I did. Not a lot of my friends were readers. Not a lot of my friends loved horror. So that's something that I really love. I love being able to make videos about the things that you guys enjoy, but I also really like you guys leaving comments and telling me great books to read and things like that. Like it's such a cool little I don't know, group of people that we have here with shared interests and it's just a lot of fun. I really enjoy obviously making videos just about horror books and horror movies. How did you and your husband meet? Was it love at first sight? We just met through mutual friends. It wasn't love at first sight. We were actually friends for a while and he and I got really close when I was dealing with a really difficult situation and he was kind of the only one that was there for me throughout it. So we definitely went from like acquaintances to friends to best friends to a relationship and we've been together almost nine years now. So I wouldn't say love at first sight. I would say a friendship that grew into something more. What's the first job you ever held? Is it weird that I don't remember stuff like this? Like I don't remember my first kiss. I don't remember my first job. I don't know why. <laughs> I think my brain just deletes stuff that's not that important. I must have been either I worked at my high school for a little and I also worked at an amusement park. You know where they take the pictures on the ride and you can look at them? I worked at one of those booths. That must have been when I was like 16. Maybe that was my first job. I really have no idea. Are you excited for Halloween ends? To be honest, I haven't even seen the second one. I did like the first. I mean, like, I'll, I'm excited that it's coming out and it'll be cool to go see another horror movie in theaters. I just haven't really been watching as many horror movies as I normally do. I've definitely been more in the reading part of my obsession than the watching movies part. Are you guys excited for Halloween Ends? Have you guys seen the second one? I don't know. I heard that it wasn't as good as the first, so it made me a little nervous. What writing projects are you working on lately? So I did start a larger length of writing project probably about a year or two ago and I'm telling you the second I get on track with something something absolutely wild happens like this last year has just been insane it's just been one thing after another but I am trying to finish it soon the only thing that I'll say a writing project that I'm doing right now is I've decided at the beginning of the year that I was going to write a short story every day and although I stopped when we moved and everything happened, I'm trying to start that up again and I just spend 20 minutes a day writing a short story, anything that kind of pops in my head or an idea that I had throughout the day, it just gets the creative ideas going and it's a lot of fun. So I'll definitely probably talk about that more toward the end of the year, uh, you know, what I learned from it and things like that. But I really haven't been writing as much as I'd like, to be honest. I do have some stuff that is going on now, but as soon as things slow down and life calms down a bit, I plan to finish editing that other project that I was working on, a longer piece. Oh, this is a good one. F. Mary Kill, Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger. Okay, so I guess I'll go off of not how I feel about the movies, but the characters specifically. Oh man, none of them. So here's the thing, Jason Voorhees, he's way too much of a mama's boy. He was in that Smasher Pass that me and my husband did. I'll link that video down below if you guys are interested in watching that. He's too much of a mama's boy for me, so I think I might just kill him. But would I want to marry any of these? I'll talk about Wes Craven's Freddy Krueger, right? Because he's not as creepy as like the remake Freddy Krueger. I'll marry him. Yeah, like he's fun. I, I think that we could have fun. He's He makes a lot of jokes and he's he seems more relaxed, you know? I don't really want to smash Michael Myers. Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees? Man, that's a tough one. Family issues or mama's boy. Yeah, I guess I'll just smash Michael Myers. And the only reason why is just, I feel like the mask is hides a little bit more. Like that Jason mask, there are holes you can see through it and we all know what's under there. So I'm gonna kill Jason Voorhees, marry Freddy Krueger, smash Mike Myers. Agree or disagree? <laughs> Not a question, just your dogs are adorable. Oh, that's so nice, thank you. Now let's go over to the other questions. 
These I think are more probably book questions than the other ones. Okay, favorite musician or band? I mean, I'm gonna have to say Alice Cooper. I've loved Alice Cooper since I was a little wee child. He's just like such a nostalgic part of my childhood, even though his music that I was listening to came out before I was born. He's been a huge influence on my whole life. I have one of my stories is like based off of one of his songs. I just love him so much. I would probably say Alice Cooper, but I, I feel like I have a pretty eclectic taste in music. I really like rap music because I feel like it's very poetic and lyrical and that's the kind of stuff that I enjoy too. So like I'm a huge fan of idea and abilities. But yeah, I, I, have, I guess I have a lot of favorites, but I would say probably Alice Cooper is like by one. I have to meet you. Favorite book slash author if you can choose. I think right now my favorite author would be Kurt Vonnegut. His work is just so weird. It's like a freaking acid trip reading his work. It's so wild. He has like this alter ego that he writes about and then he writes about it seems like stuff that's happening in his real life but then stuff that I'm assuming fiction and it's all just combined in this weird world and a lot of his stories have the same things like a lot of them have the same aliens that he talks about a lot of them have the same like i said alter ego that kilgore trout it's such a wild ride reading his books i think he's a genius i'll, I'll answer the favorite book one later because i think that one comes up do you think audiobooks count as reading i mean like i have no problem if people count them in their reading i think stephen king does that but i'm not personally a fan of them so i don't count them as my reading but if other people do, I don't think that it's a problem. What genres do you hate slash will never read? I don't think that there's a genre that I hate. Oh, I don't like erotica. That is one thing that I'm not, I don't like. It makes me very uncomfortable, I'm not a fan. But I have read a book because I thought it was a horror book and it turned out to be erotica. I'll leave that link down below too. Uh, that was an interesting surprise. So I wouldn't like go out of my way to read it by any means. I'm also not a fan of just romance type stuff, but I think that there's a way that it can definitely be done right, where there's just romance entwined in a different, bigger story. Things like Jane Eyre, you know, stories like that, where they are love stories at the core, but there's so much more going on that it holds my attention and it's not overly romanticized. But I'm not a big fan of like gushy romance type stuff. That's probably the last genre that I would actively go and seek out. Scariest movie you have ever watched? This is a hard one. I I don't really, I mean, I've watched scary movies forever. So I do get like, oh, scared from them. I do have nightmares from them and things like that. But I don't know if there's a, one movie that I can think of like, oh, that movie freaks me out. The only thing that I can say is like possession movies freak me out probably more than anything. And so for a lot of my childhood growing up, The Exorcist really bugged me. And I remember the first time I watched The Exorcist as an adult and didn't have nightmares. I was like, I'm all grown up. What's the worst book you've ever read? Oh, this is, a, I don't like, I don't like doing these. I, there are a few books that I do not like. Worst one? Oh, I'm probably gonna get so much hate for this. Okay, one second, let me grab it. I think one of, I don't wanna say it's like the worst book ever. It's still well-written, it's still a fun book, and I can see how some people like it. But I think for me, the most disappointed I've been has been this one, Peter's Drop Ghost Story. This I had read or heard in an interview that was Stephen King's favorite book that he's read. So I read it and I did a whole video on it. I'll leave that one linked down below too. But I was just really disappointed. It wasn't at all what I was expecting. It just wasn't my type of story. And I think because I was like, this is Stephen King's favorite book. This is gonna be the best book ever. I think I hyped it up way too much. Another book that is my least favorite book is Hannibal from the Hannibal Lecter series. That one just really, again, was just a disappointment. I love the writing style. I love Thomas Harris, don't get me wrong. Silence of the Lambs is one of my favorite books and I love Red Dragon too. But I think because I watched the Hannibal movie before I read the book, I was so disappointed in the ending. I was so disappointed in who Clarice Starling was as a character. I was very confused by some of the choices that the writer took. And I didn't like the backstory and knowing anything about Hannibal Lecter. Like, I don't care why he eats people. That book definitely made him feel more human. And that is another one I was very disappointed in. So I would say those are two books that just like weren't for me. Again, not like that they were bad books and that they were horribly written or anything like that. What's your least favorite horror book? I'm very curious. Maybe I'll do an entire video reading your least favorite books. That would be really fun. What is your favorite horror subgenre? This is hard because I think this changes a lot depending on, you know, what I'm in the mood for. 
but I would say my favorite would probably have to be like body horror. Not in the sense of like zombies, but I like things that you have to have a suspension of disbelief to believe. And that's how I write too, is you're just in the middle of a story and you're like, okay, I guess we're having dinner with dead people. And then you just have to accept it and move on. I really like those type of stories. And so I think, I think body horror would be a good overall category, but I love science fiction. Uh, I also love thrillers, I love mystery, I love I love a lot of different subgenres and I love to jump around. I don't just read one type of book, but probably I would say body horror is one of my favorite favorites that I've been really into lately. What book really got you into reading? I've been a reader forever. I think this was something that my mom definitely instilled in me because she was a huge reader too when I was little. I have a video from when I was a kid where I'm reading a book, I probably still have that book, in front of a Christmas tree and I'm reading it word for word but I'm like four, I can't even read yet and the book is upside down. <laughs> and so I just turn the page and based on the picture know what the story is and I read it word for word. So I've, I've just always loved books. I'm gonna leave the video of the books that changed my life down below because I think that answers the question a little bit more. I read a lot of kid YA type of horror stuff growing up, but it wasn't until I read my first Stephen King book that I was transported to another place. I read The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. I think I was leaving sixth grade and it was like the summer between sixth and seventh grade. And I remember reading it like white knuckled, feeling like I was in the forest with that little girl who's lost. And I remember being like, oh, this is a book. And it really did just change how I felt about reading. Not that that's the book that got me into reading, but that's the book that transported me to another place for the first time. What is the worst form of torture you can imagine? I am very extremely crazy claustrophobic, thanks to my brother who locked me in lots of small places when I was a kid. And so I think like any sort of buried alive small space thing would probably be my worst nightmare. That's torture in itself. Put me in a little box, mm -mm. Like when I die, no coffin for me. I know I'll be dead, I know I won't care, but I'm still not doing it on just the off chance that I wake up in that damn box. <laughs> What's your favorite non-horror book and why? So going back to my favorite author, I think probably Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut is my favorite book. It's such a crazy book to read. It's an anti-war book. He was in, oh no, it was World War II. I'm pretty sure that he was in. The book is an anti-war book that doesn't even really talk about war. Like instead he uses an optometrist who gets visited by aliens. Like I said before, it's kind of like an acid trip where you're just like, what is this? But it all makes sense. And it's so cool the way that he writes. He's, he just has such an interesting way of knowing the rules of literature and then bending them to the point where they're about to break, but they still work and make sense. I think that book made me think about literature differently and it really is a beautiful, heartbreaking, wonderful novel. What are your favorite book to movie slash TV series adaptations? I mean, my favorite book to movie, The Hellbound Heart by Clive Barker. It's made into the movie Hellraiser. That's definitely my favorite. I don't really watch TV shows all that often, but I, this whole row right here is like book to movie books. And so like, I love Rosemary's Baby, Psycho, Audition, The Exorcist. They're all great books. What book do you want to see get turned into a movie? Oh, this is such a good question. This one, Reviver. This is by Seth Patrick. This is a book I just found at my used bookstore. It caught my attention. I grabbed it, I read it, and it's seriously one of my favorite horror books. It's fantastic. There's like a group of people who have the ability to revive people after they're dead for just a little bit of time. So there's like a private sector that can revive people to say goodbye after they've passed away. And then there's like the criminal sector who can revive murder victims. So the murder victims can be like, oh, Joe's the one that killed me. And then they can use that recording in court to get Joe put away. It's such a good book. But what happens is the main character's name is Jonah and he finds that when he's reviving someone there's something else lurking in the background. I don't want to give too much away but it's like definitely a horror book, thriller, mystery, action, adventure. It kind of has everything built into one. I think it would make a fantastic, fantastic movie and I think it would actually was gonna be made into a movie and something happened and now it's not. At least that's what it seemed like when I googled it but Man, I hope this gets made into a movie one day. It's such a good book. I'll link that one down below if you guys are interested. What do you think makes a horror book scary? Does it have to scare you for you to like it? Mm -mm. No, not at all. I think 
what I look for is uniqueness in a story. I don't like reading the same thing over and over again, which is probably why I'm not a big fan of like ghost stories or, you know, just like a typical haunted house. It definitely has to have something new added to it or a different twist or something. I know that everyone says like, oh, it's all been done before, but I, do, I really don't believe that. I think that there's an infinite amount of ways that you can twist the story into making it unique and your own. So I think that's what I look for most when I'm reading a horror book is just like a line, a sentence, a chapter, or something that hits me the way that no other book has and I usually do find that in the books that I read but what makes a horror book scary I think when I can put myself in the character's place like if the writing's so good I feel like I'm there with the characters I think that's what makes it the scariest for me sorry my camera stop recording um, I think that's the scariest part of a horror book is having the writing be so good that you feel like you're transported into the book with the characters. Congratulations on the milestone. Thank you so much. What short story anthology would you suggest as an introduction to horror? So I feel like you can't go wrong with the classics. You can't go wrong with an Edgar Allan Poe, especially if you're into more gothic-y horror. You can't go wrong with an H.P. Lovecraft if you're into a lot of like that body horror that I was talking about, but a lot of sci-fi leaning as well. You have things like the movie Reanimator, which is based off of Herbert West Reanimator, which is H.P. Lovecraft's story and then you have things like you know Cthulhu which are just sci-fi based so I think that those are a great place to start but also I feel like anthologies are a great way to start in ho with horror in general and even if you close your eyes and you just pick a random anthology there's such a wide variety of stories and writers and things that you get exposed to I feel like you can't go wrong and you'll find something that you like within that book regardless of what it is but yeah I would say start with the classics um, just depending on what you like H.G. Wells is another good one too if you're into uh, more sci-fi based stories also Barnes and Noble have books like this this one's called classic tales of horror these are fantastic anthologies too and they have kind of a mixture of like Edgar Allan Poe and H.P. Lovecraft there's even Henry James Nathaniel Hawthorne there's Robert Louis Stevenson just tons of big names in horror these are just great ways I think to get introduced to horror in general and yeah I mean come on these books are so beautiful this is from Barnes and Noble it's one of their really cool editions and there you have it. Those are the answers. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for 4K subscribers. I'm really excited to make more videos in the future. Thank you for every like, every comment, every time you watch my video. I really appreciate everything. And I will see you soon with another horror video. Bye guys.